Hey there everyone, it's Haas here and Extra Work is just a few hours away, our second time this event is being held, but this time around with a lot more technical weapons. And just like I promised, here's a quick video with the single most important tip for each of the weapons you can play as that should be heavily utilized and will allow you to have even more fun during extra work. I also have several other guides for extra work that's even bundled up in a playlist you can find on the main screen of my channel, so if you're interested more, make sure to subscribe as I will also be live covering the event as best I can. So first the slosher. The slosher's damage has been buffed in sizzle season from 100 to 140 damage per slosh that made it significantly stronger, but there is a very important technique that's basically mandatory to get everything out of the slosher, and that is controlling your sloshes. A lot of players think sloshers or rollers shoot a single large projectile of ink when they're swinging around, but in fact they still consist of multiple ink splotches that fly around and in the case of the slosher, you can observe this really easily by turning your camera around when swinging. Use this base knowledge to your advantage, as for example, you can aim above hordes with the slosher and that way as your ink is falling down from the air, it can hit multiple salmonids in front of you, instead of only one of them if you're aiming at the one right in front of you, and this will skyrocket your lesser clearing capabilities. The same technique can also be used to clear fish sticks as a slosher with super efficiency, as you can climb the fish stick fast and if you slosh against the direction of the small fries flying around the totem with a few spinning sloshes, you can get rid of them in two or three attempts and be on your way. Next, the splat dualies. Rolling with dualies is fairly basic mechanic, but I still see a lot of players not knowing about its uses, so let's make sure that's not the case for extra work. By default, all dualies can roll while firing, which will put you in a so-called turret mode. In this mode, while you're crouching and not moving, the splat dualies will shoot faster, which increases your overall damage per second, so use this when you need a lot of damage. Rolling can also be a very useful technique to travel around the stage as if you roll while you're falling from a height, which happens a lot on Gonefish and Hydroplant, you will notice that dually rolling will cancel your animation and will instantly put you on the ground, saving you time, or in some cases it can even cancel the animation of a moss eating you, saving you from being splatted. Additionally, dually rolling is one of the best tools in the game to trigger slam and lit safely, as you can dually roll in and out very quickly and efficiently, triggering the slam and allowing you to split these salmonid bosses when they're blocking an important path on the stage. For the split barrel, the canopy part of your weapon is just as important as your firing weapon, if not more important. The split barrel's canopy deals 100 damage to whatever it gets in contact with, and the most efficient way to play is to briefly open your canopy while firing and also bump into salmonids for bonus damage, which will help you splat bosses faster. This is especially useful and spectacular against lessers like chums that only have 100 health and you can walk through them with an open canopy. Or you can also just shoot it out in a line to clear a path of chums approaching. Aside from the bonus damage, the canopy of a brella is also a protective tool and can be used for various occasions like shielding yourself from steelhead bombs that explode in front of you and take no damage at all. Or if a flyfish is shooting missiles at you, you can also open your canopy and block the missiles themselves when you just can't swim away. Finally, the heavy splatling, the main damage of the rotation and the heaviest weapon available to us. The main problem I see for players is definitely its mobility as they either fail to escape from nasty situations where you just need that little bit of a boost to get away, or they haven't learned how to shoot efficiently yet with a splatling and waste too much time overcharging their weapons. First, if you need mobility with a splatling to move around the stage or get away from salmonids, your best friend is hopping. Hopping is when you jump around with your momentum of swimming instead of trying to travel on the ground and only shoot small splotches under yourself that allow you to continue doing so. This is the most efficient way to get around the stage if you don't have a consistent turf all over and will save you a lot of times when needed. Second, with a splatling it is important to control your charges and only charge up as much as you need. Sure, you can cancel your charges when overcharged, but you still waste a lot of seconds that add up over time and you can also overestimate your salmonid enemies and charge more than needed when you are a swing away from getting splatted. Learn and practice partial charges in the training room to know exactly how much charge, let's say a chum, a cohawk or a steelhead bomb requires and you will notice you will perform significantly better during those tight time windows when you need to react fast and the charging of a splatling would normally be too annoying. Those are my main tips for each of the weapons for the second extra work on Gonefish and Hydroplant. 
All of those tips for the weapons will be heavily used by people going for high scores, so make sure you practice each of them if you're also trying to get good results, or even if you just want to get the most fun out of the event as possible. There are lots of tricks and tips to Salmon Run that can help others, even when you think something's obvious. It might be the difference for someone else, so if anyone has further tips for the weapons, do make sure to comment down below this video and share your knowledge with each other. Thank you so much for watching everyone, I will be live covering extra work as it happens, so expect the usual first impressions, high score runs and potential wave guides for the hardest of the waves on the weekend as soon as I can release them. Good luck with the event all of you, hope you'll have fun, it's a wrap for now, I'll see you all later.